Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Again, we're on our Gematria series. We're up to lecture number 19. Today we're going to deal with uh, two numbers. The number 17, which is the number we're up to. And again, this, there wasn't that much on it, so I also, it's the 17th letter in the Hebrew alphabet is a pei, which has a gematria of 80. So we'll be dealing today with both 17 and 80. Again, the number 17 in Ivrit is Shiva Aser, is found sparingly in the Torah. The one event in Jewish history that is connected with the number 17 primarily is the 17th of Tammuz. And that was the day when Moshe Rabbeinu came down from the mountain with the first set of tablets. Again, he saw that the Jews were worshiping the golden calf. He broke the tablets. And again, it's also this day, the 17th of Thomas, also is connected with the destruction of both the first and the second temple. Now, the number 17 is connected to different words, the most common being the word tov, which means good. It is also connected to such words as chet, which is sin, egos, which is nut, and also hagada the book we use at a Pesach Seder, among other words. It's interesting that we basically don't eat nuts on Rosh Hashanah, reason being because it is an allusion to sin, again, the word chet, since both nut and sin have the same gematria of 17. But the question becomes, why connect to the, the gematria to the negative words? Why not connect it to the positive word tov, good? And then the connotation would be positive. So I think the answer connects with our purpose in life, which is to choose between good and evil, and many times the challenge is being able to differentiate between the two. So since Rosh Hashanah is one of the holiest days of the year, and we are all being judged for the next year, we err on the side of caution and connect the gematria to sin and not to good. Now in the portion of Ayigash, in the book of Bereshit, Yehuda makes an impassioned plea to the viceroy, his brother Yosef, to allow Binyamin to return home to his father Yaakov. He tells the viceroy that when his elderly father will hear that his youngest son is a slave in Egypt, that news will surely kill him. And so he offers himself as a substitute for his brother. His words are presented in 17 verses. The number 17 connects with the first of the 13 personal requests that we make in the Amida, in the standing prayer, which we call tefillah, the atachonein la'adam dat, that you give a man wisdom. Again, so it's a request for wisdom. <clears throat> that request contains 17 words. It also has 67 letters, and the verse itself, which equals 68, which is the gematria of the word chayim, which means life. So in essence... Yehuda was asking God to inspire him with wisdom in his plea to the viceroy so that he, he could extend the life of his elderly father. Now, Yosef was 17 years old when he was sold by his brothers into slavery in Egypt. And the portion of Ayaki, which means life, deals with the death of Yaakov. The gematria of the word Vayachi, and he lived, is 34 reason this alludes to the fact that the best years of Yaakov's life were spent with Yosef, 17 years in the land of Israel before he was sold as a slave, and then 17 years at the end of his life when he went down to Egypt to be with his favorite son Yosef, who was now the viceroy of the country, again, second most powerful man in the world. The word tov happens to be the 33rd word in the Torah in the book of Bereshit, and the sum of the ordinal values of the two letters ayin and pei is the uh, 16 and 17. Again, the 16th letter and the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 16 and 17 is 33, thus alluding to the union of the two levels of dot, knowledge. The ayin, the I alludes to the written Torah, and the pei, the mouth, alludes to the oral Torah. Now, What's interesting is that the 17th letter in the Hebrew alphabet is pe, or fe. With a dot, it has a strong sound of a pe, and without a dot, it's a fe. The number 80 is associated with the attribute, again, with the gematria. Pe has a gematria of 80. It's associated with the attribute of gvura, of might, strength. 
The Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, Mishnah 22 states that 80 is the age of Gevura. And in chapter 4, Mishnah 1, the Mishnah asks the question, who is a Gibor? Who is a mighty person? And it answers, one who overpowers his inclination. The greatest challenge in life is getting past yourself. That is the positive application of the trait. The negative application of the trait can be found in the Torah's prohibition regarding the use of magic and the occults. In addition to the pay and fay, there is also what we call the final pay, which is not bent, but is elongated. The bent pay symbolically alludes to a closed mouth, while the open long fay is seen as an allusion to an open mouth. The Gemara and Shabbos in uh, 104a states that one should know that there are times when one's mouth should be open and times when it should be closed. Now the pay has a hard sound, whereas the fay has a soft sound. You can hear it, pay fay. There is a great lesson that we learn from this. When the Torah and the uh, book of Exodus, Shemot 1526, refers to God as our healer, the Pasuk states, Ani Hashem Echa, I am God your healer, a fey, soft, a single term. However, when the Torah refers to the human physician and permission to go see a doctor, then it uses the hard pay, again in Shemos, in 21.19, where it says, Verapo yirape, that he shall cause the patient to be healed. Hard and a double term. When God heals, it is, heals us, it's soft and permanent. However, when a doctor administers our cure, many times it comes with pain and discomfort. And it's not always successful the first time. It has to be done again. The pay is made up of two letters when you write it out, a chaf and a yud. The gematria of chaf is 20, the gematria of yud is 10. 10 and 20, 30, which is the gematria of the letter lamed. Chaf, lamed, and yud spell the word keli, which is vessel. Our mouths should be used as a vessel for holiness. The Rashbi from Shurim Bar Yechoi said that just as we have two ears, two eyes, and two nostrils, we should also have two mouths, one for spirituality and the other for the mundane. However, he quickly corrected himself, saying, you know, it's better that man has only one mouth, because if he had two, he would use them both for the mundane. And this is also why God places two gates in our mouth, one soft, the lips, and one hard, the teeth, to protect a person. But somehow we still manage to misuse it. Now, the pay stands for the word pa, which is mouth, the organ of speech. As, the, as Rashi in Bereshit, chapter 2, verse number 7, comments, it is man's power of intelligent speech that differentiates him from all of creation. It is the mouth that allows a human being to be able to fulfill the ultimate purpose of creation, which is to sing praises to God, and to study his Torah. As stated in Tehillim 115, verse number 17, the dead do not praise God. Speech is so powerful because it is the connecting force between the physical and spiritual parts of man. The mouth is situated between, directly between the head and the heart. It is the connecting link between the two most important and valuable organs in the human body. It's interesting that if a person is starved, the two, and they do an autopsy, if he dies from starvation, the two organs that remain large are the brain and the heart. Everything else gets small. These are important. In addition, there are 32 teeth in one's mouth. 32 is the nugmatria, the numerical value of the word lev, which is heart. This teaches us that one's mouth and heart should be connected. Also alludes to the 32 pathways of wisdom and the 32 times that the name Elohim, the God of judgment, appears in the account of the six days of creation. Again, the word Elohim and the word Hateva both have the same gematria of 86, nature. Anything that happens in this world, whether spiritual, emotional, or physical, can be transformed into action 
only after it finds its expression in words, whether they are articulated or not. As the Maral of Prague states, the ion, the I, insight, is the beginning, and with, while the pay, the mouth, brings to fruition. As soon as a child is able to repeat a phrase, he is taught to speak the words of Torah. Torah tzivulanu Moshe, which translates to me, Moshe commanded us in the Torah. And also the Shema Yisrael, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. We have a belief that a baby is taught by an angel all the Torah while it is still in its mother's womb. But as the boy, baby is born, the Sutton, Satan, touches his mouth and it forgets all that it has learned. How is it possible that the baby forgets everything? In the womb, the baby's mouth is closed. And knowledge that is not articulated is quickly forgotten. Which is why the words of Torah and prayer must be articulated to be effective. And that's why we say, Shema Yisrael, hear, O Israel. You can only hear what you've spoken. So it's an allusion to that. In Tehillim, chapter 90, verse 10, it states, The days of our lives are 70, or if through Gvura, 80 years. So 70 is a normal lifespan, and 80 means the man's existence transcends the ordinary allotted lifespan. So the development from 70 to 80 mirrors the conceptual transition from 7 to 8, namely extending from the fullness of a natural realm, 7, to that which goes beyond the confines of nature, which is 8. Now Yosef, Yosef Atzadik was the viceroy of Egypt for 80 years. Moshe, our teacher, was 80 years old when he brought the plagues on the Egyptians and led the children of Israel out of slavery. God revealed the Torah through the mouth of Moshe. Each of the journeys of the Jews in the desert were al pi Hashem, through the mouth of God. During the Second Temple era, Yochanan Kohen Gadol served as the high priest for 80 years before he became a Sadduti. There were 80,000 young Kohanim who were slaughtered upon the seething blood of the prophet Yisachariah in the temple. There were 80,000 chiselers of rock in the building of the first temple which Shlomo built. 80 witch witches were hung by the 80 students of Shimon ben Shatach. 80,000 Jews were killed in Betar by the Romans with the defeat of Bar Kokhba. There are 80 tractates of the Brisot. 80,000 men who were named Aaron. Aaron went after the funeral bear of Aaron, um, Moshe's brother, Aaron Akoin, Godel. These were men who were born from parents who wanted to divorce their wives. But Aaron was able to bring peace and harmony into their relationship. The power of the mouth. It's interesting. A simple farmer goes into his field and separates what we call truma, the first tithing giving to the priest from his harvest. It is his mouth, his mouth, not that of the priest that makes the produce that he separates holy. So holy, in fact, that anyone who is not a priest, in fact, even a priest can only eat it if he is spiritually pure. The punishment for desecrating this commandment is excision, the highest form of punishment. So we have 17 and 80 together, 97. May we use our mouths properly, a mita gadola, a great character trait, gematria 97. Betov v'chesed, with goodness and kindness, again, the gematria of 97. And with that, may we herald in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless, and have a good Shabbos.